If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you how. It's free. It has everything you need to make a podcast right from your phone or your computer. It doesn't matter which way. Anchor even distributes your podcast for you. Then your stuff can be also heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast as well with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast right in one place. To download the free Anchor app, go to Anchor. Dot mf to get started welcome to it is what it is a true crime podcast i am your host Shamari. marie you guys i get a puppy today son i had to redo that like four or five times because i kept swearing start this off on a good note anywho's so today's a show review And I know all the people who have sent me show reviews, you're like, yes, it's mine. It's not. (laughs) Sorry. But I was sick, as I said. No, I didn't have the COVID. Anywho. And I was sitting on my couch watching Dateline like a good American citizen. And next thing you know, I'm watching this case and I'm like, oh, this is messed up. I'm going to try super, super hard not to swear. Super, super hard. But I was like, ooh, mm -mm." and then they said that it happened in, they're like, the small suburbs of Meridian, Idaho. Shut the front door. That's my neck of the wood. Well, not my neck of the wood, but I know people who live in Meridian been there. So I paid a little bit more attention. And then by the end of this, I was like mad with fury. So let me tell you, let me break this down. It was the Dateline Deadly Desire season seven, episode 15. Obviously, it takes place in Meridian, Idaho. You got an affair. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows, if you listen to me for time or whatever, how I feel about this. This one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This lady. Ooh, she got some cojones, this lady. So anyway, there's also a Dr. Phil you can watch some clips on, which I totally recommend. So this is the murder of Emmett Corrigan. He was killed by his mistress's husband, punk ass Rob Hall. And his nappy ass old mistress, old mistress, Candy Hall. Now, Rob and Candy Hall had a troubled marriage themselves. Rob went off to California for some work times, and in that time, he had started an affair himself. In California. And so Candy being 40, going into her 40s, was very distraught. And she's a paralegal from, I think that's the right word. Who gives a shit really what her job is? Crap, I swore. Oh, sorry. Who gives a poo what her job is? Anyway, so she's devastated. Okay, about this affair. And so at work, she's crying. Even her friend on the show is like, yeah, I saw Candy. She's super, super sad. Always crying and thinking of ways to get Rob back at home. Robert, back at home. They got two children's, two daughters. Um. Well, then she gets fired from her job. Okay. 
And her and Rob are kind of mending things. And Rob's like, okay, I'm not going to go to California and have an affair. Whatever, I guess I'll like you. And then she gets fired, like I said. Well, when she gets fired, there's this young, strapping, handsome, athletic. He works out. He's built. He's muscular. Thirty. He's 30 years old. He's 10 years younger than this broad. Well, he's starting his own law office. His name is Emmett. And he's starting his own law office. Meanwhile, these two start hooking up, okay? He has an adorable, gorgeous, pretty wife. That's really why I'm trying not to cuss is because she's really religious. And if she hears this, I don't want her to be like, I can't listen to this lady because she cusses all the time. So I'm trying not to cuss it. So if you do listen, girl, I'm trying. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so she's gorgeous, okay? Her and Emmett met back in the day. They got married soon after meeting at the temple and in the good old Idaho. Well, I live in Idaho, but you mainly Utah, Idaho ways. When you get married at the temple and you're the LDS, you start popping out babies like you're a factory, dude. Like... Out, 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 out. Anywho, by the time she's 30, she has five children. And she's banging. Beautiful. Mm, beautiful, dropped a gorgeous lady. So they're married. And she sees that Emma is becoming different. Meanwhile, she's met Candy, Okay. And Emmett has described the relationship between him and Candy as like a mentor, like a mother. That she praises him. She tells him that he's going to become this a magical, wonderful, amazing person and everything else. And so, like I said, they're popping out babies, right? Candy even has the cojones, I'm telling you, to send his wife gifts for their baby. Mmm. Mmm. I had a hoe try to do me like that once. Anyway. Um. Then she holds this baby. Holds this baby in her arms. Mmm. -hmm. Offers to babysit. All sorts of shenanigans. And his wife, Emmett's wife, said that when he, when she met Candy, then she knew that something, like, something ain't right with this old lady. Like, she's trying to get attention because she's walking around this law office looking like Aaron Brockovich. If you haven't watched that movie, totally go do it. Anyway, back to this. So. One night, oh, and by the way, Rob finds out. Emmett's wife never knows about the affair until the night that Emmett dies. Rob knows he has found out about the, the affair because he picked up a, her phone, Candy's phone, when Candy was in the middle of an exchange of heated sexual conversations. And so he's like, what is this? And she's like, mm, it is what it is. I'm 40. He's young. And he, she says that Rob's like, I can't compete. He's young. He has money. He's this. He's that. He's like, okay. Mm. Boo cocky. Anyway. So one night, Emmett tells his wife. I have to go to Walgreens. I'm feeling sick. I need to go pick up a prescription for my sickness. And she says that this day she cooked this food. She got the kids dressed up. She was going to have a good night, good food, and try to figure out what is going on with her husband. She does not know. An affair is not what she is thinking. She's thinking we now have an alcohol problem 
we've found drugs or something. So when he says that, she says, no, I need you to stay. Please stay with me. Stay here tonight. I need you. And he straight tells her, you don't tell me what to do. And he leaves. Well, across town, some old lady is like, I need some old lady stuff. I'm going to go to Walgreens. And so she does. Well, on security footage, she's seen pulling up to the Walgreens. She parks. Emmett pulls up, gets in. She gets in Emmett's truck. They depart the Walgreens. She says, we go get gas. We go find a neighborhood. And we have coitus. We do sexual relations in the vehicle in a neighborhood. Trashy. Just kidding. I've done it. Trashy. Anyway, and then her daughter drives by the Walgreens and sees her mom's vehicle there. Well, instead of calling her mom and being like, where are you? She calls the dad first, the husband, Rob. And then she calls her mom and she's like, where are you? And Candy says she's off with a friend and she goes, okay, well, I saw your car at Walgreens and I called dad and I told dad. And so then the daughter gets off the phone and then Rob calls and she answers the phone and Rob's like, what are you doing? And she's like, nothing. And he's like, are you with Emmett? And she's like, mm-hmm. And Emmett takes the phone and he's like, I'll whoop your ass. You want to fight? We be fighting. And he's like, I'm at the Walgreens. And he, and then I guess she says, Emmett's like, we'll be there in like 2.5, bro. Hold on. Well, the husband goes in the Walgreens, looks frantically for his wife up and down each aisle like these two are just in the Walgreens shopping like they went to go shop I mean shit people maybe do have an affair to go shop crap I swore Ugh. anyway so and then he goes back out to his truck moves his truck out of camera sight okay it takes Emmett and Candy around 17 minutes to get back to the Walgreens from the neighborhood of which they have chosen to go have relations in. Well, they get back to the Walgreens. No one really knows what happens next. All we know at the end of the day, Emmett is shot in the heart and in the head. And also, Rob his head is like grazed. And Candy says she makes a 911 call. It's crazy. It's frantic. And the police get there and everything else. And he dies in her arms, in his mistress's arms. Dies. Now, the police ask Rob, they're like, what the happened? What the WTF? And he's like, Emmett shot me. And they're like, what? Let's take the wife and the mistress, obviously, to the place. When they go and break the news to Emmett's poor wife, that's when she not only learns that her husband is now dead, but he's been having an affair with this lady he told her was like a mom. Ugh. Ugh. The mind coitus she went through, I can't even imagine. Oh my goodness gracious. Like, and I've been there, y'all. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Thought this girl was my friend. The whole thing. 
And like, ugh. Oh my goodness. Oh man. So she finds out. Right. Candy, meanwhile, her and Rob have made up. By the time we go to court, we're a loving husband and wife. Again. And on the stand, they keep apologizing. It's, I love him. I'm sorry. They're crying about the troubles they went through. All this BS. Meanwhile, Emmett's poor wife is like, mm, great, you guys took that chance from me. My life was controlled by you three people with my me having no input whatsoever on what happened. Oh, can you even believe? Like, I can't even. And then in the court, they literally try to blame this whole thing. Like, she tries to say that Emmett got out of the car out of the truck, got nose to nose and was like, you want to fight? We can fight. We be fighting. And pushes Rob. And then Rob says that he, this is what Rob says. He says that when he gets pushed, Something falls out of his pocket. He thinks it's his cellular device. It is not a cellular device. It is a gun. That gun is then taken by Emmett. Emmett shoots at him, grazes his head. He then fights with Emmett and gets the gun and shoots Emmett in self-defense. Candy says, when Emmett pushes him, I turned around because I was like, mm-mm, you know, I ain't going to stand this. And she turned and then she heard gunshots. That's all she saw. The F. So really, and even the judge in this case was like, I have never in my chair, in my time of being a judge, had someone under oath come up here and tell a million different stories. Mm, never, ever in a million years. So, they don't find him guilty of first-degree murder, which they should. Just goes to prove. People are stupid. They get him with second-degree murder for 30 years. He's eligible for parole in 2028. He will be around 60 years old. But I doubt he will because literally he still blames everything on him. And he's like, I'm the victim here. Like, I am the victim. And like, ooh. And then so they ask Ashel, I mean, his wife, what, um, Ash, what her final words are at the, at the end of the show. And she says, like, what I would say is put your family first. Like, that's what I would tell people who are out there trifling and being stupid. Put your family first. This could be you. You could go get yourself killed over and a fur. It ain't worth it. And really, why would you want to go have an affair with some chick? Obviously, she has no self-respect. Obviously. Ugh. Women who sleep with pregnant women. Ooh. God. Lore? Mm. Okay, so I'm going to pray you. Play you. <laughs> pray for you. Play you. The last, like, her, um, part of her thingy, it's a clip on YouTube, it's like three minutes long. So hold on. You'll see why I was like, oh, once his wife speaks. And the head didn't just end in the air. And a wife. And in my family. Emotional testimony is a man who murdered another in a love triangle learns his fate. We're going straight to the big story with today's Six on Your Side. The man who killed his wife's lover in a Meridian parking lot sentenced to 30 years behind bars. Before hearing his fate, it's a news clip, you know. Emotional testimony from Emmett Corrigan's family. With tonight's big story, Mike Bogo followed the trial and was there for it. Don and Michelle, the family's testimony was very impactful. Family members say mm. Rob Hall's actions ruined their lives. And for the first time, we heard from Rob Hall as he, too, broke down in tears. 
first to testify, Emmett Corrigan's father. Second, you took out that gun out of the holster. You already knew what you were going to do with it, didn't you? Mm. You killed my son. Punk it ass. was incredibly emotional testimony as Emmett's parents talked about the impact of his death. I miss my husband. I need a Peter. And he should be free. Mm. Emmett's wife, Ashley, was next on the stand. This is a picture I took. I think it was about a week before um, Emmett died. She held a photo of her and Emmett's five children as she talked. The night itself was a traumatic event for each of us. Mm. And the two years that have followed have brought much pain. Ashley said she's wished for an apology from Rob Hall, Candy Hall, and even her dead husband. I've tried to figure out how, and without hearing, I'm sorry. And it's chance to say I'm sorry isn't it here. But more importantly, Ashley described the murder's impact on her children. I can tell you about my babies pounding on a casket. Their hero's body lying inside. Screaming for him to wake up and screaming at me because I was the thing telling him that we couldn't open the box. I could tell of nights of them screaming in their beds because they had a dream that the bad guy came to their house and shot them in the head. Paul broke down several times as he listened. Then it was his turn. I have two daughters. She's a freshman college student. <laughs> and the apology Ashley waited for. The shockwaves beyond that have shattered Emmett's wife, Ashley, and their children. And I'm so sorry. And Donna Michelle Rob. He is taken. just disgusting. Just disgusting. She ends up going candy. Mm -hmm. She ended up going to prison too for like 18 months because she embezzled from a company. Just trifling. Ugh. And then you go on Dr. Phil. Raw. And I cannot watch the whole Dr. Phil clip. But, ooh, you guys, I tell you what. The reason why I watch this shit. So, oh, man. And Ashley, now that you guys obviously know and heard her name, is a um influencer. She has her own website. I mean, her own YouTube channel. And she has all that stuff. And, like, I just... I can't even begin to tell you, like, the crap that this poor woman went through to have these people sit on the stand and be like, I love you, I'm sorry, blah, 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 when it's their fault, her husband never got that, oh my lord. Mm -mm. Anyway, you guys can go see this precious woman, okay? Her YouTube channel is The Moments We Stand, and she's beautiful. The way she forgives and the way she talks about it and the way she describes it is like so point on. It's unbelievable. The feeling of betrayal, the feeling of being cheated on, like of like the whole thing she was it's amazing just amazing and like the way she stood up for herself on like the dr phil clips that you see because like you put me in front of that girl and i'm telling you what i'm gonna be trying to fight her i don't care if we're on dr phil or not but no not not her poised respectful because she's a decent human being she just sat there and told candy trash bag that girl you may have stopped me for a moment but i'm still shining thanks like oh my god i don't even know blows my mind crazy stuff that happens in idaho well it happens everywhere obviously but oh man that's today's episode you guys Ugh. Yeah. Right? But anyway, so I'm going to Utah, like I said, to get a puppy. Super stoked. 
my sister's watching my children. And then the other thing that I didn't want to say before, but now I know for sure, is next Friday, I close on my house. I'm going to be a homeowner. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked, if you guys can't tell. So, like... My life is just going to get crazy hectic for a smidge. So bear with me. But it's not for anything bad. We're moving. The podcast room. Our own podcast room. Oh, gee willikers. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh, and I've also been mulling over an idea to start an OnlyFans page. I really think I'm going to. Like, I don't care if you guys know my business or not, but like, I'm always taking pictures of my breast assists. And so it'd be cool if they paid for themselves. I don't know. I just know I know a bunch of girls who have them. And girls make thousands of dollars in a month blows my mind. People are like, oh, you put an ad in your podcast. Now you're probably just raking in the dough. So I put that ad in two weeks ago and I have made, and I'm not even kidding you, I'm getting on my app right now. I have only made $21.91 since I added that ad. That is the only money I've ever made off of my podcast. And so I work at Walmart, okay? And so when my friends are like, oh yeah, I took a picture of my boobs four or five times a month and then I post it on this thingy and I get paid thousands? <laughs> okay, sign me up. I'm thinking about it, mulling it over. Obviously, you guys will know if I decide to or not, but Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So a fan one is going to be the next one. I promise. But I love you guys. Wish me safe travels. If you're in Utah, what up? And be ready because tomorrow I will be posting a video of my children finding out that they have a dog. 